Well, hello and welcome to Age Friendly Thunder Bay. Rebecca Johns, my name, your host for the for the program today on uh, Shaw Spotlight, and we have a guest, Kim McKibben, who is here from the Thunder Bay Health Unit, but she is a public health nutritionist, healthy living program. We're going to talk about nutrition and what you should be eating as a senior, and some of the fun ways that you can make your food and your nutrition habits a little bit better than maybe that you currently do. So Kim, let's start off the fact that March is a month for nutrition. Yeah, March is Nutrition Month, and right. we like to celebrate as dietitians across the country. Dietitians of Canada celebrates Nutrition Month in March every year, mm -hmm. and so it's an opportunity for us to come out and do things like this and talk about nutrition for everyone, in this case, you know, talking about healthy aging and, and how food has an impact on that. And, and I'm picking up on that. It's really important as you get older that you yep. continue to eat well. Absolutely. And, and I think sometimes as a senior or older adult, you need to do better than what you used to do. That's interesting that you say that because it's true in the sense that mm -hmm. we often eat less as we get older, Correct. but our nutrient needs actually go up for some things. So there are certain things that we need to make sure that we eat more of. Give me things an like yeah, I was yeah. gonna. I was yeah. waiting for that. Uh, things like vitamin D, for instance. Mm -hmm. Our body's not as good. Our digestive system doesn't absorb certain nutrients as well as we get older. So vitamin uh, B12 is an example of that. Some of your seniors that are watching maybe get vitamin B12 injections to help with that. But something like that is an example. Or vitamin D. So what would what give me an example of what food I would yeah I would find vitamin D in? So vitamin D is often fortified in the milk products that we get. Uh -huh. So much of the time we get our vitamin D from that. The other one, you know, that's more common is fish, right? Getting getting some vitamin D from those different sources like that. But mostly it's fortified in your in your milk, and people who are still drinking milk mm -hmm. um, can get the vitamin D that they need from that. We live in a northern climate here. And so vitamin D comes from the sunshine. Unfortunately, we don't live close enough to the equator to get the right amount of vitamin D outside in the month of March right. or February or January or December, you know. So, um, so we need to get it from the food sources. So that's why the government started to fortify things like milk with vitamin D to help us. What, one of the things the government has just come up with is a new food guide, yeah. or at least in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. and, and that has uh, identified a, a new um, regime, so to speak, to yes. follow when you're eating. Yeah, and I brought a picture of it, so okay, we'll, we'll put it on the camera later when we yep. move over to our table. Right. So the new food guide, the healthy plate model is what we're talking about now, and it came out in 2019. It feels like just last year because Was of COVID, it? Oh so I get goodness. that. Okay, yeah. So a lot of people haven't seen it or heard about right. it, but it uses a plate model, and half of that plate is vegetables and fruit, a quarter of that plate is protein foods, and a quarter of that plate is grains. Ideally, whole grains is what we're looking for. It, it's really important. Sometimes you, I always think of my grandmother, yes. uh, who was long past. Past, but at the same point in time, she in the morning would get up and have a cup of coffee and have some toast. Mm -hmm. That was her breakfast. Yep. Years and years and years. I don't know if that's really all that healthy, particularly. Well, I think lots of us get up in the morning and have yep. a piece of toast, right? But the what the food guide would recommend is that you put some fruit or vegetables. Most of us would have fruit in right, the morning. In that the morning. seems to fit better with our palates yeah. in the morning. But looking for some, maybe a little bit of protein food. So put some peanut butter on that toast, maybe boil an egg, and then, you know, have a, a few cut up strawberries. Turns that meal into, you know, having all three of those components from that healthy plate model. Right. One of the things, many seniors, unfortunately, are on their own, um, yeah. you know, etc. It's a, it's a real effort, so mm -hmm. to speak, to, to even bother even making toast. I'm, I th I'm yes. going to an extreme there. <laughs> Fair enough. But at the same point in time, they, it, it is, it's a lot of work to get, prepare food and all the rest of it. What's some hint that you can provide for us? Well, we're going to move over to yes. the table for the other half okay. of our, and we're going to yeah. do, I brought show and tell, Rebecca. It's okay. like show and tell day. So we'll talk about ways to make it easier in the kitchen for folks to try, you know, to make sure that they're getting those nutrient needs met and trying to do it easier, just a little bit easier. All of us need easy, even those of us who might not fit the senior category, right? Yeah. Well, Making sure right. we have healthy food on the table is not always easy for all of us. No, and I think that in, in today's era that we're all busy, and even older adults are busy. How do you go about shopping for an older adult? What is it that you actually should be looking for? Right. So I think that if you think about your healthy plate model, mm -hmm. looking at the different foods that are um, fit into those vegetables and fruit categories, 
and um, protein foods. I am going to talk a little bit about trying to find protein foods that are more plant-based, yeah. especially because you know there's been quite a bit of inflation, you might have noticed, in Correct. the food department. Um, so making sure that we have plant proteins is a little bit cheaper on our budget as well. So finding things like that. And then finding things, I think one of the other things that I wanted to talk about today was about um, some of the troubles that might come along with eating as well that changes. So, you know, we may have trouble with our teeth. Mm -hmm. We may have trouble with chewing and swallowing as we get a little bit older. So finding things in the grocery store that are softer or that we can cook to make a little bit softer or finding methods that, that make chewing a little bit easier. So looking for those kinds of things can, can be important right. at the grocery store as, you know, as well as the variety of food, right? It's really yeah. important to find a good variety. And I think one of the things that we really need to talk about as we go into to our mm -hmm. next segment yeah. is the fact that uh, you mentioned food inflation. It is mm -hmm. really hitting older adults in particular yeah. uh, that are on fixed incomes and how do we address that for them? It's, it's, it's a real issue. Yeah, and I think we're gonna spend some time talking about that. Um, but we also wanna make sure you know, to emphasize that healthy eating is important to keep our energy levels up right? Mm -hmm. To keep our bodies healthy. We've just come through a, a global pandemic and whether we're on the other side or not is, you know, it's still important to eat a variety of food to help our immune system, right. to keep ourselves strong. Um, and to also just to uh, maintain our independence, right? If our bodies are in good shape, then we have a better ability to, to care for ourselves. Right. And I think that's really important as yeah. we move through our older years. With, without question. Mm -hmm. One of the things you, you know, you talk about is the fact that eating well is so very important and, and how can we go about doing that uh, when you have a really limited income? It's, it makes it very challenging mm -hmm. for people. And getting out, I, I think, to actually find a place to, to shop if you can't get out and all those kinds of things. We're going to talk a little bit about that as yeah. well. But I think your comment too about chewing is a good one because I know a number of older adults that don't have all their teeth anymore. Mm -hmm. and yeah, how, or, how they might they have, or they might have dentures, yes, that's right? right? Or sometimes people have swallowing issues that don't even relate to their dentition. Right. So making sure that we find foods that are soft enough to manage that um, and foods that still give us the nutrients that we need, right? And that's we right. have higher nutrients needs as we've looked at. We only looked at two examples, but there are other nutrients that, you know, we want to make sure that we get. Um, and just for for disease fighting. So looking at antioxidants, you know, lots oh, of lots right. of fruits and vegetables. If we eat foods with that are high in antioxidants, fruits and vegetables are some of those. And some of those are the most fibrous and they're harder to chew. So how can we cook them to make them a little bit softer and what kinds of foods? That's what we'll talk about when it's show and tell time. We'll talk about <laughs> some of those things to make it to make it a little bit easier. One yeah. of the benefits, yeah. though, is that seniors also have smaller appetites. So that can help both with the budget, um, but you have to really maximize the right. food that they, you know, that goes into our bellies. If our appetites are smaller, we want to make sure that the food is more nutrient dense. One, one of the things, I find I only eat two meals a day. Yeah. I don't need any more than that. Yeah. But a number of people I talk to now are eating, older adults like myself, are eating uh, smaller meals, like more, mm -hmm. but they're not eating very much at, the, at yeah. one time. And it's that can different. work, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Whatever works for you, right? So yeah. if you'd like to start your day off with some food and move through, um, and you know, eating when your body feels hungry is really important, but sometimes we might not feel hungry. And no. so we need to remind ourselves to eat. So setting a clock maybe is helpful, you know, so that we do have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, even if it's something small. Yeah. And just trying to include foods from that healthy plate model is a great idea. Um, the other thing we haven't talked about is water. So I know oh, we're talking about healthy true. eating, but the other thing is hydration. So yes. often seniors are more prone to being dehydrated because they just don't drink enough. And uh, so wanting to make sure, you know, the new food guide really talks about water. And, you know, you brought us water today, even, yes. which was very kind of you. <laughs> but, you know, I carry, carry my water bottle with me so right. that, you know, I always have water. And this, for me, I like a special kind of water. And I think I like bubbly water. Mm -hmm. So it's just plain water, but it bub has bubbles in it and I like it cold. So if you're a senior at home and finding you're not drinking quite enough, finding the water that you like. So maybe you want to flavor it with mm -hmm. some apples or oranges or um, citrus. A lot of people like citrus things. Cucumber water, if you've ever tried cucumber water, is quite refreshing. It right. sounds weird maybe, but that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes the weird things are delicious. Um, or maybe you like ice in your water. Maybe you like it warm with lemon. Yeah. So whatever way you're getting your hydration, 
Uh, it could even be from but soup. But important that you get your You get your, it. You need some you water. need some liquids. And it doesn't but, have to just be water. It can no. be it can be milk or it can be soup other ways that we can get that. Too. And 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 one of the, yeah, that's one of the things that's really important. It does not have to be eight glasses of water. No. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Kim is our guest and will be and join us a few moments when we come back. Well, welcome back to Age Friendly Thunder Bay, and we have Kim McGibbon, who is from the Health Unit, as our guest today in our program. And we're talking about nutrition and how you should be eating and things that we're doing to make your nutrition far better than what you probably are doing. So, Kim, you have a whole bunch of things here, but I want to first talk about the food guide. Yeah. You mentioned that in our first segment today, and, and the fact is that you should be following the food guide, and it's very easy now with this plate. Well, it has this it. fun new plate model right. to make it a little more friendly, right? right? We used to count the amount of servings yep. and the size of servings, and now the idea is just to eat in a certain pattern. And so the food guide is made based on the science around disease prevention mm -hmm. predominantly, right? right? About the best health that we can have for the longest amount of time. So preventing chronic diseases, people who eat in this pattern this healthy plate pattern, half vegetables and fruit, a little bit of protein, a little bit of grain products, they live longer and they have lives that have less uh, right. chronic diseases. Right. One of the things is that, okay, so we have this food guide. Yeah, and we Everybody's do. gonna get a copy of that at some point in time. <laughs> sure. Or they can go on, on, yep. on, on, Canada's on the web, website. On the website. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have, because a lot of seniors unfortunately don't have, have yes. computers and that's fine, but you can go to the library and borrow books and things like mm -hmm. that. Yep. All right, so you have the, have the food guide. Or you can call guide. the health unit. Yes, we have hard copies. Well, then people can get them from there. there that's you go. never thought about that. That's mm -hmm. a good idea. Yeah. But the point is, how do you put that into action? Yes. How do you actually make that work for you? Yeah, absolutely. Considering all the other complications in life, getting out to the grocery yeah. store, being able to chew, all of those kinds of things. So we brought some show and tell here so we can talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that. So if you use the plate model, the goal is to eat 50% of your food as fruits or vegetables. So I have some, you know, just some random examples here. Bananas, for instance, are a nice, easy, soft choice. They tend to be one of the lesser expensive yes, in the, the vegetable that. and fruit section. Right. So those are great for breakfast, for snacks for dessert. Mm -hmm. I used to cook them with a little bit of brown sugar and butter and then you have a caramelized banana. Banana is a great dessert as well oh, if you're you looking go. for a little Makes something something. Yeah, yeah, back in the days when I was a starving student, that was a great a great snack for and just, just dessert. Just kind of pick up on that for yeah. a minute cuz a lot of seniors like a dessert. Like yes, they want a little finish, sweet. They want a sweet at the mm -hmm. end of the meal. That's still a good yeah, thing. Absolutely. Fruit makes a great okay. dessert. That's good. You know, um, if we choose fruit, I have frozen as mm -hmm. well. So another way to save money in the grocery store and also prep time, right? So Prepping fruits and vegetables can be hard. Sometimes we have mobility issues as we get older. We might have arthritis in our hands. Right. Um, so buying things that are already cut and prepped for us just makes it easier for all of us to eat them. And then they store better, right? You don't have to worry about them going bad in no. your fridge, Now let's talk about, for a second, about frozen. I yes. mean, I guess the ideal is to have fresh. Is that what? Well, is ideal that, is, that is a, is a question mark, right? Yeah, if you grew right. it in your backyard and you're picking it right now, right. it's going to have the highest amount of nutritional value. But most of our food here in northwestern Ontario travels more than we do, is the term we use, right? right. It travels yeah. 1,500 to 2,000 kilometers to get to our plates. These strawberries were not grown here. No. They were definitely grown in California or Mexico, right? So they've traveled a long way. And when they pick them and freeze them right away, it traps the nutrients in there. Vegetables would be the same? Vegetables would be the same. These are my favorite vegetables I brought these for you because I think okay. that, Brussels you know, sprouts. what people need to think about is the things that are their favorites and eat more of those things. That's fine. You can Find eat the, the same thing over and over and over well, again. Well, you know, it's ideal to eat a variety of things, All right? right? Um, but choose your favorites because mm -hmm. why not, right? Yeah. You want to eat your favorite things and enjoy them in the way that you like them. So Brussels sprouts are actually a lot of work if you cut them right off the stem from your garden. Yes. But if you buy them like this in this beautiful little Brussels sprouts bag, all you have to do is pop them in the oven with a little bit of olive oil and maybe some coarse salt and roast them to candied perfection. Well, there we are. So, that, that's a, I think that's really a good thing for people to know that, that it's, you know, you, right now you can go into the stores and buy a lot of fresh fruit particularly, and I'm saying to myself, maybe I shouldn't be buying that. I should be buying the frozen. <laughs> yeah, and which is exactly what I did today. That's like, right. these are my groceries that y'all are looking at. Yes. Um, this is what's going to go home and into my fridge, and I do this all the time, and um, especially, like, my daughter, she likes to eat strawberries, and right. they're not very... No. 
inexpensive at the grocery store these days. And they're not, So no, it's easier to buy frozen. And yeah. to have frozen in the freezer for when, you're, when you run out of groceries. Maybe you don't have someone to take you to the grocery store. Maybe you're getting your groceries delivered from an outside agency, um, but you need you know, access to things. Having extra in the freezer is always a great way, especially when the fresh stuff runs out at the yes, end of the week, right? right? Then you have something to so, tap into. A couple of other things you've mm -hmm. got here. Yeah, right? absolutely. So we're still talking about veggies and fruit because yes. we want to fill that plate with veggies and fruit first. You know, another thing is to buy winter, you know, it's winter. So buying winter vegetables, things that store well. So potatoes and beets. This is a, a squash because I'm feeling like the need for some butternut squash in my mm -hmm. life. So, you know, Th this is hard to cut. Right. So what I would do is stab it with a fork a few times, throw it on a cookie sheet and put it in the oven. When it's soft enough, then I would cut it in half. Which makes it much easier. So for much easier, adult. right? Yes. And for yeah. me too, right? Yes. Like it's hard, it's hard to cut. Um, so if mobility is an issue, that's a great way to do it. If you have a microwave at home, you could do the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Make it even easier on yourself. And you know, it can be used in soup. You can just cut it in cubes and roast it. Um, you can make it into a stir fry. There's so many options, even salad. A, a, uh, cut up little pieces of squash go great in a salad. Right. So those are all examples of, of ways to use to things that. that store well, that are inexpensive. What, turnip, just like would a cabbage, be, would that, would that turnip, cabbage, all those winter things, right? They have a lot of food value for the size of the product, right. even though... Um, but I, I'm looking, I'm picking up on your comment about uh, trying to do it. A turnip is really hard sometimes yes, to, absolutely. to cut. Absolutely. Yeah, it, so you can peel it. Yes. And then you could soften it other okay. ways too. Um, you could also buy it frozen, frozen in a little bag like this that's I already ready to remember go. remember that. Okay. Yes. So, you know, those are ways that you can continue to eat the vegetables and fruit that you love, uh, but make it a little easier on yourself. Right. And less waste, right? So we often waste a lot of fruits and vegetables because we don't get around to cooking them. And if they're in the freezer, there's less they're, likely they're, to be right. wasted. You mentioned fish and you do have a, a can of I tuna here. I do have a here. little tiny can of tuna, yeah, mm. that we had in our nutrition room downstairs. So let's talk about protein foods now. So the food guide, the top corner of the food guide says that a quarter of your plate should be protein foods. This is a very inexpensive version, right, mm -hmm. of a protein-rich food. So flaked light tuna in water is usually what we recommend. Um, in water of oil? rather than oil yes, okay. is the recommendation, and that's yep. just because it holds less fat that our body doesn't need, but it does need this protein and the good fats that come from fish as well. So that's one example. I also have lots of, oh, those are veggies and fruit. I talked about veggies and fruit, and I forgot to mention my canned vegetables are also an option. Um, canned beans, right? What could be easier than opening up a can of beans and, and warming it up? I like to melt some cheese on beans when I eat them. And then this can can go back in a container in the fridge or the freezer, and it can be frozen for later. If you don't eat this whole can, you're probably not going to at one sitting. No, and, and for an older adult, that's a good thing because you can, uh, you know, have two meals out of one, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, or three maybe. Like yeah. this can would probably last me three meals. Correct. Right? So that's great, right? That one can that cost $1.19 at the grocery store has now turned into three meals right. worth of your protein food. I just want people to know that you don't really have eggs in there. There's no you're, eggs in no. there. <laughs> you're just flipping it. I'm thinking, it's if, just I an was, example. if I was watching the program, I'd be thinking, where are where those are eggs going to go? Where are those eggs going to go? Anyway, Absolutely, they're eggs. scrambled. It's, yeah. Scrambled eggs are a great choice for when you have trouble with swallowing and chewing. No, but eggs are also you know, so versatile, right? You can eat a boiled egg, you can scramble those eggs, you can poach the eggs, and they're a great way to add uh, protein. Mm -hmm. um, and they're very quite inexpensive, in, not as you know, inexpensive as they were a decade ago or two or no. three decades ago, but they still last a long time. There's 12 eggs in that carton, right? So it lasts so a long time. And there's so many things you can do with eggs. Yeah, so exactly. I like to make a frittata, which is just like, I like to cook onions and potatoes in my cast iron frying pan and then put whatever other vegetables I have, mostly like green right. onions or things, and then put some eggs over top and then put it put the whole in. thing in the oven and then bring it out and it's dinner. Right? Now you have with a side of salad, of course. That's of course, of course. That you need to have that. Now one of the things that you've got here is is um, uh, you know some barley and some spices and things. Yeah, That's I'm just going to talk about add. these last couple of yeah. this last thing. So from a, a plant protein perspective, I have nuts as well. So nuts might be hard for chewing, but they're also very energy dense. So they have lots of great protein in them, and. Kim, is, is there a better you don't have to eat, eat? You don't have to eat a lot of them, okay. but they give you those nutrients. And so if you're like struggling to eat too much, they can be a really nutrient-dense way to get some snacks in is, there. Is there a better nut to eat? Like some people say you it's should your eat favorite. almonds or whatever. You should is eat there? all the nuts that you like. What you, know? you like. Yeah, you find the ones that you like. Okay. Try different ones and yeah. try them in different ways. I really like to toast them. That's why I bought these 
um, slivered almonds because I like to toast them on that cast iron frying pan right. and put them on top of my salad. All right. It brings out the flavor when you toast the nuts. So that's another option too. If you're okay with the chewing and things like that with nuts, they can be good sources. All right. Or you can chop them. You can smash you can them smash up, them so to up. speak. You can and blend them. And put them on top of things. Yeah. If you're getting fancy, you can, you know, these are cashews in this other container here. You can blend them and make like a creamy, cheesy sauce that might go on a stir fry. Right. Delicious. Also. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Or you can just buy nut butters. I don't have any. I didn't have any nut butters at the office, so <laughs> I just wasn't able to bring any of those. But peanut butter, almond butter, cashew butter, all of those things are great to spread on your toast. And and, it gives and they you, don't require any prep. No, right? and they also give you a different flavor, which yeah. is really something that so you, you can, would like as well. You can change it up. Okay, sorry, so, you're going to talk no, about um, yeah, I was just, some grains. Yes. So the last quarter of the plate is about grains, mm -hmm. and so ideally, what we want is for people to choose whole grains, right? Things that come more um, connected to the plant. All right. So this is pearl barley. So maybe you like barley soup. It's still winter, right, in northern Ontario. So barley, beef and barley soup might be a favorite. What about rice? Rice, yeah. I didn't have any, I don't no, have no, any rice on the just, table, but, I'm just but barley out, yeah. and mm. rice. Um, I, I eat things like quinoa as well. So different kinds. That? It's a grain. It comes from South, South American grass. Oh, and it all is, right. It, mm -hmm. You know, kind of looks like in between, uh, I don't know, like a smaller version of barley, maybe it's more right. of a round it's circle. I've not heard of that. Yeah, so right. it's quite delicious too. And then you can use grains in salads, you can use them as side dishes, mm -hmm. and you can use them in soup. So I really recommend that people keep kind of a basic shelf of ingredients. So having some different kinds of grain, like rice, maybe wild rice, right. maybe some um, barley, uh, bulgur, couscous, all those different things are different kinds of grains you can keep in your cupboard. Just like lentils, you might keep some lentils. They store really well. Mm -hmm. And this is a giant bag of oatmeal in front of you here, Rebecca. So right. the other thing is oats. Yep. Oats are like probably the most standardized whole grain that people eat. And it makes a great uh, thing to keep around. And you don't even have to just have it for breakfast. You could it, have it for dinner if that's what you want. That's right. Now, yeah. is, you know, you can get the large flakes mm -hmm. and then you can get the like Quick oats, or, uh, right? quick. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference in that or is what your preference is? Yeah, it's just is? a matter of processing and also cooking time, right? Oh, okay. So the, the, the larger the flake, the longer the cooking time is right. going to be. Also, there's more nutrients in that. So when they, um, they make the quick oats, you mm -hmm. know, they take away some of the layers of the whole grain. Oh, right. So a grain has three different layers, you know, with the bran and the germ layer, as well as, you know, um, the, what's called the endosperm, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> which is which is what breaks down into yeah. just white flour, you know, if we're talking about a grain of, um, you know, from, from wheat specifically. Right. One of the things before we did our program today yeah. was the fact that I suggested that you bring a chicken because I <laughs> use a small chicken a lot. So you Excellent. So I that. did. I brought yeah. a chicken. Yeah. And so we wanted to talk about how one little chicken like this can mm -hmm. turn into so many different meals. Correct. So we're going to brainstorm things that you've done with your chicken and I'll brainstorm things that I've done well, with the chicken. The first thing you can do is, is eat it as it is. As the whole thing. You could slice it up and have it for dinner tonight. That's right. Maybe even make a little gravy because yeah. if you're having trouble with things that are dry, chicken can sometimes be dry and that's right. hard for swallowing. Yeah. So and making I like a little a gravy. I mean, I love a chicken sandwich. So right. that's the next thing. So like just chicken, like slices of chicken yeah. or like with mayonnaise because you, you can could also mayonnaise, like dice it up yeah. with some mayonnaise and that's make a chicken right. salad sandwich. The other thing I do is put it in like chicken fried rice. I make my yes. rice, which yes. you've got, well not barley no, here, don't. but yeah. rice. Yeah. And then I put chicken in that. I find that's yep. really a And I like onions and carrots me. and peas. Yeah. See, I've got carrots and peas right here. Look at that. Bam. A and, meal. And you've got to do that. Yeah, absolutely. But there's a, there's a fair amount of chicken like on yes, one of these. Exactly. Uh, little chicken. And no, this them. is an already made chicken. Correct. So you can buy this at the grocery store for like $10. Yeah. Which can make, you know, maybe five or six meals Easy. for a senior at a, Easy. Yeah, at a minimum. That. And it freezes if you want to. You can cut pieces of it off, right? Yeah. Use it for today. Yeah. Have it for tomorrow and put the rest in the freezer. And we brought some freezer bags to showcase how you can easily freeze things and just put them in a Ziploc bag for later. Other things that I like to do with uh, chicken stir fry. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about right. a stir fry before. So you can cut some pieces up and stir fry it. Chicken noodle soup. Who doesn't want some chicken noodle soup? Right. Right. And freeze that for later. So lots of great things that you can do. It's, you, it's a very versatile food at a very reasonable price. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you and can buy it not already made, too. And, and that's flavor correct. it flavor it the way you the like. Way. At the grocery store today, they had three different flavors. This one's barbecue, mm -hmm. and there was like shawarma, so like Middle Eastern oh, right, spices right. on one as well. Uh-oh, and I forget what the third one was. Anyway, you Darn can it. buy them. <laughs> you can buy them in different ways. That's right. And if you want to flavor things, the other thing about cooking is making sure that your food has flavor. And sometimes we have less taste buds okay. as we get older. Yeah. So using herbs 
and spices. So this is oregano and rosemary, and this is chili powder. I like chili powder in a lot of my cooking. Yeah. So if you want a little, you want to spice it up, um, it can give your food a lot of flavor. So try. Don't be afraid to continue to try new new flavorings. Right. You're going to make a smoothie here. I'm going to just, just for fun. Yes. So we wanted to talk a bit about meal planning. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, sometimes we don't really want to eat breakfast, but here's a way that we can do it with just some frozen bananas. And they freeze really well. They freeze the so way, well. And when they start lot. to go bad, yeah. right, on your counter, just put them in a Ziploc bag and yeah. off they go. And then, so this is a great way to eat fruits and vegetables, especially if you don't feel like eating. Maybe you don't feel like eating in the day and you just want a little snack. So you can use some, this is the favorite at my house. I have a 20 year old daughter at home and she eats a lot of smoothies. She was a gymnast and she needed a lot of calories and growing up. And this is up. also a good way if you, if you can't um, chew food the same way either. Exactly, right? You just put it in a cup. Right. And then if you don't drink the whole thing right now, you can just leave it in the blender, put the lid on, put it in the fridge and put it back on to blend it back up. So it's really easy I used to, to do, do that. I used to do that for my mama when she was, when she was sick at the end of her life. She didn't want to chew things. It was hard, right? right? And so we did a bit of that. Is it going to be too noisy for me to do this we're part? We're going okay. to try it. <laughs> we're just going to do it. Well. Okay, here we go. Maybe. We think. Maybe we don't. There well, we go. Here. Wow. So we're getting the milk, which you indicated at the start of our program. Right, good source of calcium. It's really important. Vitamin D yeah. and B12, all yeah. things that we have higher needs for as Correct. we get older. So that's why the smoothie was a perfect example. And then the other thing is yogurt, right? So yogurt also has calcium in it. And it's also good for your... And protein, good for your probiotics, that's right? For your belly, your yep. gastrointestinal yep. tract, right? So yep. there's lots of neat research about that too. And this is just plain yogurt. So you flavor it however you want, right? Mm -hmm. Just buy it plain. It's also the cheapest one on the shelf because it's plain, which is great. Kim, we're just about out of time. Amazing. Is there something you would like to end our program off very quickly? I just wanted to talk about Nutrition Month because yeah. it's Nutrition Month and we talked a little bit about um, March being Nutrition Month. The Dietitians of Canada have a website, also the Thunder Bay District Health Unit. Mm -hmm. If you are on the internet and you want to go there, you might get some recipe inspiration. So there is. Lots of great recipes if you want to check out some some I, new inspiration. I, try I did that out. because you gave me the, the yeah. website before and yeah. I went and looked and I have a recipe I'm going to try. So Okay, yes, you're going to tell them. us what Very it is. Very easy. The one I pulled off was about, uh, I'm trying to remember what oh, the heck it was. Okay. Now, what, about to. the Unlock Foods. And oh, so that's another certainly great website. For, it's a great for website to yeah. be able to get lots of nutrition. So we're ending our program this afternoon. And thank you very much to Kim McGibbon. And we're going to end off our program with you going in and doing your one minute of exercise with Linda DePiro. So enjoy. And thanks again, Kim. Awesome. Really, it was thanks excellent. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Thank you very nice much. To, nice to be here. Hi, I'm Linda DePiro, and today I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of bouncing. So let's start with a little bit of limb bouncing with the arm, okay? Now, fascia is our soft skeleton. It's connective tissue. It connects muscles, tendons, ligaments, blood, bones into a matrix. To keep fascia healthy, it needs to move, and it loves to bounce. So I've got my heels popping, my knees bending as I'm bouncing this ball in front. We have fascia all over our body, so don't forget about the, right, the chest area. And I'm bouncing from side to side. And fascia loves the bouncing because it promotes rhythmic movements, spring-like movement, non-muscular. I'm just kind of going through a few areas here. Coming down, pinning the ball, and bouncing forward. Not only are we bouncing, but we're opening up through the lower back. You can take it down to the floor or onto a little chair or stool and keep bouncing down towards the floor. You can also take the ball or a cushion, you don't need a ball or a cushion, behind your back and bounce into the wall. I'm going to switch to a bigger piece of equipment, a bigger ball here, and if you have any in your house, you might want to get it out and start bouncing. So again, through the fascia, right? And not only that, you're working through the lymphatic system, which is our sewage system of the body. Loves bouncing. And you know what? You don't have to do it that long. Here we go into a bit of arm movement, and eventually you'll feel your heart starting to pump and you're getting a little bit of cardio. It's playful, it's fun, working fascia, fascial system, lymphatic system, and your cardio. Good job.